بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد Continuing on in our dars, lessons in fiqh, basic fiqh, we reached a hadith, we, in the last uh, dars we talked about the miswak, and so we'll continue on reading some of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam pertaining to the miswak and using the miswak and the fadl or the benefit of using the miswak. And all of this comes from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. The last hadith we mentioned was a hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said it anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal lawla na shukka ala ummati li amartuhum bi suwaq in the kulli salat where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said if it wasn't that I was uh, if I didn't fear for my, for my nation then I would have commanded them to use the miswak with every prayer what was the Prophet ﷺ fearful of? Fearful of it being become uh, compulsory upon the Ummah. So this was out of mercy for the, from the Prophet ﷺ, which was his tradition, which was his way and his habit and his custom, ﷺ. This is the way of the Prophet ﷺ, the, 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 to be merciful. And he was trustworthy. And he was... Uh, the last prophet of God, the last prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alayhi salatu wasalam. So this was the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam to be merciful to his ummah. So he was fearful that the sawak, the miswak, would become an obligation. And with that, as we mentioned in the last lecture, that it shows us that the miswak, that it, it shows us the benefit of the prayer, the benefit of the miswak, and that the miswak also is mustahab to use, that it is highly recommended, and from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, so anyone who wants to gain that ajr, and wants to gain cleanliness at the same time, the hygiene, uh, hygiene in their mouth, then they should follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ by using the miswak, alayhi salatu wasalam. Coming to the hadith, the next hadith, Imam Maqdisi rahimahullah ta'ala qal an Hudayfata an Hudayfata ibn uh, an Hudayfata ibn Yamani radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idha qama min al-layl yushusu fa'ahu bi siwaq ruahu Bukhari wa Muslim This hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by Hudayfa ibn Yaman radiyallahu ta'ala anhu or narrated by Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to get up in the depths of the night get up at night and he would clean his mouth and brush his teeth with the miswak and this was collected in Bukhari and Muslim Imam Maqdisi rahimahullah ta'ala he said that the meaning of the word, yush, uh, the verb yushusu, yushusu, that this verb, it means to clean and to like rub. So it shows us that the Prophet ﷺ was using the miswak to clean his mouth and to clean uh, to brush his teeth with alayhi salatu wasalam and his mouth in general. It shows us also that the Prophet sallallahu loved cleanliness and he loved alayhi salatu wasalam to clean his mouth, uh, to use the miswak. So that shows us that we should love this in order to remove, to, to, to prevent anything, any kind of germs and bacteria and filth and uh, uh, smell that is disliked or displeasing to ourselves and others. So we should try our best to use the miswak as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. Uh, as we are full aware of and as uh, is that when a person wakes up, of course, probably from 
dryness in the mouth, dehydration. Also from not eating and, and keeping the mouth closed, you know, there's various reasons why a person's uh, mouth becomes, sometimes there is a uh, um, smell from it, emitting from a person's mouth. So the miswak, of course, helps to get rid of that smell. And this is something, it's all known. So it shows us also, this is the reason why the Prophet Wasallam, out of the many times that he used it, and as he mentioned in the first hadith, that uh, being a recommendation to use it uh, during every salat, but also when a person wakes up. And this is from our custom anyhow, and most of the customs I would imagine of many of the cultures around the world is that they brush their teeth when they get up uh, uh, from, from sleep. And this is due, why? Because that is the time when the mouth is least inactive, at least active, and, and maybe due to hunger and the, and the other things we mentioned, that there will be uh, a displeasing scent coming from a person's mouth during that time. So using the miswak, as the Prophet said, uh, did, is, uh, recommended for us to do to brush our teeth. So this is also illustrating for us the encouragement Islam has for cleanliness. Islam encourages us to be clean, to clean our private parts, to clean our hands, to wash ourselves for prayer even, to clean ourselves when using the restroom, to clean ourselves when waking up, which at times can seem like common sense in some cultures, but in fact we'll find that many people unfortunately neglect those important habits which are related to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. Another thing that we can observe from this hadith is that this is here, this hadith is illustrating the sunnah fi'liyah because this is not a statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This hadith is a statement or a hadith of the hadith of uh, Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu that he said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to showing that this is the habit of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this was the, his habit alayhi salatu wa salam that he used to when he uh, woke up in the morning he used to clean his mouth uh, with the miswak so this is the sunnah fi'liya meaning those actions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that reported, were reported about him in hadith some of the things that the ulama mentioned, Shaykh uh, Ali Bassam, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned that this hadith uh, illustrates for us, it affirms for us the legis uh, that it is legislated to clean a person's mouth by using the miswak when a person uh, wakes up. So that is one of the times it is, it is encouraged and it is mishroor, meaning that it is um, that it is uh, legislated to use the miswak when a person wakes up. And we've already mentioned the reasons why, and that the miswak is a tool for cleanliness. Also, it illustrates for us that any time that the mouth Regardless of whether the mouth, uh, th that there's smell and you're in need, maybe there's tartar build, build up on your teeth or whatever, that a person is encouraged to use the miswak like the Prophet ﷺ did. So this, is, this can be before Salat, after Salat, when waking up, after using the restroom, when making wudu. Anytime it is encouraged to use the miswak. Another um, benefit we gain from this uh, hadith is that this is from the, the manners of the Prophet Sallallahu this uh, cleanliness and this encouragement to proper hygiene and that we should strive to have that hygiene. Going to the next hadith, An Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha qalat دخل عبد الرحمن بن أبي بكر الصديق رضي الله تعالى عنهما على نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنا مسندته إلى صدري ومع عبد الرحمن سواك رتب 
يستن يستن به فأبده رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بصره فأخذت السواك فقدمته وطيبته ثم دفعته إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأستن به فأبده رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بصره فأخذت السواك فقدمت وطيبت ثم دفعت إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فاستنى به فما رأيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم استنى استنانا أحسن منه فما عدا فما عدا أن فرغ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رفع يده أو إصبعه ثم قال في رثيق الأعلى ثلاثا ثم قضى عليه وكانت تقول مات بين حقنتي وذاقنتي رواه بخاري ومسلم إن سديت the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم this hadith tells us about when the prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام when he died that and it shows us the importance of the miswak that the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم on his deathbed he used the miswak and he wanted to use the miswak the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in this hadith the hadith of the mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, wulo kari al-kafirun, wulo kari al-shia. Even if the Shia hate it, even if the kuffar hate it, even if the munafiqun hate it, we say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with the mother of the believers, radiallahu ta'ala anha. So Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she said, Abdurrahman ibn Abi Bakr al-Siddiq, the son of Abu Bakr, Abdurrahman, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, may Allah be pleased with both of them, that he entered upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was on his deathbed, alayhi salatu wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was resting on the chest of Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha. And Abdurrahman, he had a miswak. And it was a moist miswak that he was using to brush his teeth with. And the Prophet وسلم, during, due to his extreme sickness, والسلام, and pain on his deathbed, that he motioned with his eyes. He made, he, he motioned with his eyes uh, towards the, uh, towards Abdurrahman in the Miswak. So Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she gr took the Miswak from Abu Bakr, uh, from Abdurrahman radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. And she cleaned it by cutting off the tip of the Miswak. And she cleaned it for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then she gave it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he used it to brush his teeth. And she said, I didn't see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam use the miswak more extensively than I witnessed that day, than, than he used that time. That means the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam really cleaned his mouth that time with the miswak, you know, used it uh, voraciously, I guess if you want to say, alayhi salatu wasalam. And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam finished, alayhi salatu wasalam, he raised his hand or his, his finger. So the narrator had doubt whether it was the finger or it was the hand of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he said, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, Fi Rafiq Al-A'la. You know, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had the choice, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, to continue in the dunya or to go to his Lord. So he chose to go to his Lord, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, to return to Allah, to Barak Wa Ta'ala, so the Prophet ﷺ died, and the last thing he did, alayhi salatu wasalam, was brush his teeth with the miswak, 
and raised his finger or his hand and said, Fi Rafiq al A'la, three times. Meaning, Jannah, to be with thee as uh, Imam. The Imam explains the meaning here that Rafiq al A'la is in reference to the ayah in Surah An-Nisa where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَالَّذِينَ أَنْعَمُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah An-Nisa Those who Allah has favored from amongst the prophets and the truthful ones and the martyrs and the righteous or the pious so those are the those are the those are the companions of jannah so the prophet sallallahu mentioned that three times alayhi salatu wasalam on his deathbed from this hadith are immense benefits some of the benefits that the scholars mention is the importance of using a moist miswak. Another benefit is also the encouragement to, of course, keep your miswak clean. So this is very important, and unfortunately, we tend to have sh uh, forget this. But you know, your miswak accumulates germs. It's in your mouth. Then you put it in your pocket. You put it here. You drop it on the ground. All these kind of things. So it's encouraged to kind of clean it and cut off the tip and and and, and renew your your miswak. Also, another benefit from this is that it's permissible to use the miswak of someone else. That, as the Prophet ﷺ did, that it was cut and cleaned for him and presented to him, and he used it more. He used it in such a manner which was even more intense than his usual using of the miswak. Because she said, on the Prophet that she didn't see him use the miswak more intensely than he did at that moment. We'll mention one last hadith that's in the, the last hadith in the chapter of the miswak and we'll be brief. It's a very short hadith. On Abi Musa al Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala anhu. أَتَيْتُ نَبِيَّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمُ هُوَ يَسْتَاقُ بِسِوَاكٍ رُتْبٍ قَالَ وَتَرْفُ سِوَاكِ عَلَى لِسَانِهِ وَهُوَ يَقُولُ أُعْ أُعْ وَسِوَاكُ فِي فِيهِ كَأَنَّهُ يَتَهَوَّعُ The Prophet صلى الله عليه uh, in this hadith of Abi Musa al-Ash'ari رضي الله تعالى عنه He said that I gave the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم or I came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he was using a moist mis miswak alayhi salatu wasalam and he had it upon the edge of his tongue alayhi salatu wasalam meaning so it also shows us to clean them use the miswak to clean your mouth totally not just brushing your teeth use it you can clean your gums for the tongue, keep the tongue fresh, because a lot of times that's where bad breath emanates from, and, and so forth, as the Prophet ﷺ did. So Abi Musa, عنه, he gave the Prophet ﷺ, he came to the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet ﷺ was using a moist miswak. And he was using it, and it was on the edge of his tongue, or uh, uh, it was on the, the, he was using it on his, his tongue. And, and the Prophet ﷺ, he didn't say, but the Prophet ﷺ, what this means here, when they say, that it means the Prophet Ali Afdal Salatu Wasalam that the so the sound when a person is almost choking, like if you were to try to make yourself vomit, 
or if you use like when you're brushing your teeth or something and you almost you know you go like that and it it, it gets in your throat or you know it goes to the edge of your tongue so you almost want to uh, vomit <clears throat> it's that 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 possible that involuntary action that happens when you are uh, you have something in your mouth so the Prophet ﷺ was using his miswak so much so on his tongue, alayhi salatu wasalam, that it made the sound that he that he went, uh, uh, you know, meaning that it was uh, causing him almost to uh, a light choking sensation, alayhi salatu wasalam, and the the miswak was in his mouth. As if he wanted to, he was using it as if he wanted to, as if he wanted to choke, meaning he was using it so much and it was on his tongue. So that shows us that the Prophet ﷺ used the miswak ex extensively and that it is recommended to use the miswak, as we just mentioned, at least three or four ahadith of the Prophet Ali after Salatu Wasalam using the miswak. Some of the things that the ulama mentioned regarding this hadith, as we already are, have already mentioned, the um the uh legislate the that it is legislated to use the miswak from wood and of course specifically the prophet ﷺ, they use what's called from the uh, arawak tree which i believe is a tree that may specially grow in the arab peninsula but it's permissible to use any even your toothbrush bi you will gain the same ajr you know, if your intention, but the, or, or at least you'll gain ajr. But it, of course, it's better with your intention to try to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu That doesn't mean you you don't have to brush your teeth and use toothpaste and whatever. But to use that as well to keep your mouth clean. But to use the miswak as much as possible to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So it is recommended to use. A miswak from the from uh, wood, and especially the arawak tree, which the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam used. Another benefit also it shows us that using the miswak is ibadah; it's a type of worship, and that it is qurbat, meaning something that draws you nearer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. By using the miswak, it is a way of coming closer to your Lord Subhanahu Wa Taala through hygiene. Why? Because you're following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, and you're preparing yourself for worship. Another benefit of this hadith is that it is also legislated to be excessive with the miswak, to use it extensively, even so much so on your tongue to where, as the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam did, and didn't, uh, and, and didn't say anything contrary to that, use it extensively. Don't hurt yourself. But use it, clean your gums, clean all of your mouth, the back of your mouth, clean your tongue. Another benefit of this hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the ulama men mentioned, is that it, uh, using the miswak to clean the tongue sometimes. So that is also legislated as the Prophet Ali after Salatu Wasallam used it in this manner. Also, it shows us another benefit that it is permissible to use the miswak in front of people, you know. But one thing I want to mention, as I, I've heard this from several of the mashayikh in Durus, that they mention that, and some sometimes make enqar of this, unless out of necessity, like our Sheikh, Sheikh Ibrahim Rahaili, I recall him mentioning about this, about using the miswak during a dars, during a lecture, that you shouldn't, that that's not really from the manners of the Talib al-Ilm in that, in that particular, that the Talib al-Ilm should be there, benefiting from the Sheikh, taking notes, listening and, and concentrating, and trying to benefit. But the Sheikh mentioned that unless it's in order to keep you awake, meaning that you're falling asleep, so use the miswak to kind of alert yourself, keep yourself alert, then in that situation, then it's, it's okay. 
And so these are just some of the benefits that the ulama they mention with regards to these ahadith and with regards to the miswak. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah bless the ulama of Ahl Sunnah everywhere throughout all time in the Salaf of this Ummah. And may Allah bless us to follow the Salaf of this Ummah because we really live in a strange time when it is so strange to follow the Salaf and to speak about the Salaf and to follow the minhaj of the Salaf. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to follow the madhab of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.